This is a story of Dave and Sharon finally living their dreams of sailing to the Caribbean and beyond. It all started with a conversation while raking leaves. Instead of being tied to one place, we decided to leave everything behind and begin a life of adventure. Our daughters were out of high school and it was time to move on. We bought a sailboat, which was an Amel Mango, and spent time getting it ready for our adventures. Join us while we share our adventures from getting the boat ready and embarking on our cruising life. At way up New River, and it would have taken most of the day to get out to the ocean. Yesterday we got the, um, the report in from the survey, and, uh, and as I said, there's so much to do on the boat that it looks like it will be uh, very expensive and take time, like a, a year or two, to get that boat ready for sailing. Um, so I kind of made a decision on the spot. I had told my broker that um, I told my broker that if if it cost as much as just buying another boat that's in better shape, that I'd end up doing that. And so um, we had both known about a mangle that was up in um, Connecticut. It looks like it's been really kept up well and added to. So I immediately contacted that broker and set up a time. I contacted him yesterday and said, how fast can you show it? So today we're on our way down to take a look at it. So we're taking our trip down to Connecticut. See how this pans out. Then I'll get in touch with uh, Jeff Sorgen, the one down in Florida again, and tell him I'm dumping out of that one. I think this is just heavy. Just walking down the dock, approaching Huntress, we are very impressed with the shape she is in before even getting close. When approaching from the finger docks, we could see that the fake deck teak has been ground down and painted with all grip. The boat hull has been redone with epoxy paint and a nice mahogany rub rail added to both sides. The boat canvas is in good shape and fairly well made. There's a thick 
cushion bed with pillow cover in the aft cabin, which also includes a canvas cover. The boat includes a 12-foot Mercury dinghy with a 9.9 .9 horsepower Mercury four-stroke and a Mercury 3.3 .3 horsepower kicker motor, as well as a magma gas grill. Check out the outdoor bed. Nice cockpit and wheel. The dash gauges are on the older side. The chop plotters are early Raymarine widescreen multi plotting. The engine room looks neat and clean. The boat has a Perkins 4.236 motor and a Northern Lights 6K generator. The boat has a Furuno green screen radar with a remote screen that sits in the cockpit. It has a Weatherfax single sideband radio, shortwave radio, two VHF fixed radios several handheld VHF radios and a smaller Raymarine chop plotter that tied into the larger chop plotter on the dash. The microwave sits above a large redone freezer where the wet locker used to be. The refrigerator has been redone into a larger one with upper and lower sections. All of it is done in nice mahogany doors to match the interior of the boat. Above the fridge and stove are the electrical panels, and they are done up in classic Amel French with some upgrades. There's a brand new two burner stove and a nicely done stainless steel backsplash. It's still set up with butane gas capabilities. It also has a diesel heater and fans. All the gaudy Amel brick looking tile countertops are replaced with mahogany base and Corian inlays. This model boat has a high divider between the galley and the salon with an added shelf and a plant holder. The salon is beautiful. All the cushions and curtains have been redone. The headliners in the entire boat have been redone and the thick cushions that are sitting on the settee are meant for the cockpit. The bow cushions have not been redone but are in pretty good shape. This is a nice boat. Forward head is in good shape with original sink and has added handheld or stand up shower head so you don't have to use the faucet from the sink as originally designed. And there's a fresh water vacuum flush toilet. 
The Companionway SETI is filled with tools and spare parts. The aft cabin has been redone and a medicine cabinet has been added. The closet has plenty of room for hanging clothes. The aft head has been fairly updated with mahogany shelves, wicker cabinet doors, an electric freshwater vacuum flush toilet, as well as a handheld stand up shower head. Here's a quick look behind the electrical panels in the autopilot. So we decided without much hesitation, this is a beautiful boat and we're putting an offer down. We'll see how this one goes, but I think it's the boat. Storage space in the, in the, in the, uh, in the boat seemed to be a lot more than the, than the Mango Special. Uh, the engine room looked like you could eat off the floor. It was so neat and clean. And uh, the other thing is, Sharon liked it instantly. I could tell because she was going around opening everything, looking, asking questions. And you could just see she was a lot more comfortable in this boat. Uh, electronics were not new, but they're, what is it, about 2002-ish and very usable. The uh, autopilot on it is an old manual well, uh, electromechanical one, and it looked like it was in ex really good shape. And the owner says it's worked perfect, so we'd probably go with that for a while. Uh, see how how that does. Eventually, we'd probably upgrade the electronics to a better, uh, to a little bit newer system with some AIS on the radar. Uh, things we would have to add fairly soon would be a wind generator and solar panels so that we don't have to keep running the generator to recharge the batteries. So we ended up making an offer on the boat.